Hey what's up guys, welcome to my updated Razor guide. So as you guys know, in patch 1.5, Razor got like some indirect buffs because they made physical damage a lot better, notably with the new Abyss Floor 11, the new like sort of Blessing of the Moon, and with the new artifact set Pale Flame, which is very good for physical DPSs. We're going to be breaking down what is the best everything for Razor and everything you need to know in one video. What I mean by that is we're going to go into a deep dive on like every weapon, artifacts, talents, some animation cancelling tips, basically everything you need to know with a DPS showcase at the end. Anyways, I don't want to talk for too long in the intro, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, huge shout out number one to the Razor main discord because, uh, well, one, I'm good friends with them and two, they helped me a lot with this video because they have very good resources. And if you do need more information on a lot of the stuff I say, you can find the resources in the description. Uh, or in their discord also i want you guys to know that i stream most nights on twitch link in the description follow if you want to catch me live but anyways i want to keep this intro very short to not waste your guys' time so if you're new be sure to sub and that being said let's get right into the video the first thing we're going to talk about is razor's talents and some tips about him i'm going to talk about animation canceling talents you should prioritize and just go over his talents and his play style so let's start with his abilities first of all his elemental skill uh, has two ways of using it you can either press it or hold it and both can be good press will do this quick sort of slice right in front of you it'll deal some electro damage give you particles and generate an electro sigil you can have up to three of these and these are really nice because when you hold your um your elemental skill it'll consume these sigils so basically press creates a sigil hold consumes them and will convert them into energy so if you do want to build your burst back on razor you can press up to three times and then hold and gain all the energy from your sigils the main things to keep in mind are one, your hold does a ton of AoE damage. So basically your press will be faster and hit someone in front of you, whereas hold uh, does this big circle of damage all around you. Also, the cooldowns are different so that you, you definitely should keep in mind. Press cooldown is only six seconds, whereas the hold one is 10 seconds. So quite a bit longer. The scaling of this ability is all right. I know sometimes it can be a DPS loss at low talent levels, but it does give you particles and stuff. So I recommend using it. And especially when you invest highly into your razor, when he has like high talent levels, and if you manage to get constellations on him, uh, your electro damage increases, making this ability um, deal a good amount of damage. Keep in mind with one of your passive talents, this ability actually resets, so you can use it twice uh, with Awakening. Basically, when you use your burst, your elemental skill cooldown resets, which is really nice. Your elemental burst is Lightning Fang, and this makes Razor a selfish carry. What I mean by that is his burst will basically summon a wolf that attacks with him. Um, and when you swap out of Razor, it disappears. So ideally, when you use this, you want to be all set up, maybe have a shield ready, off-field supports have their abilities already out, or maybe Superconduct has been proc'd already, so that when you use this, you can stay on Razor and just DPS for the whole duration. And so naturally, the party comps and like the supports you run with Razor um, are very important to maximizing, to optimizing this ability and, you know, dealing the most damage as possible. So I will go over that in the party comp section. But for now, you should just know that this ability basically buffs you and makes you deal two hits at once, one electro damage from your wolf and one and you know your, your normal uh, razor attacks and it also increases your attack speed quite significantly on top of that you're more um, resistant to interruption which is really good and you also have electro resistance this ability is really nice and the attack speed bonus makes it really fun to play and also increases your dps quite a lot uh, the only downside is that the energy cost is quite high but once you get this second passive talent which uh, basically just gives you more energy more energy recharge and if you manage your E properly, this energy cost, while it is high, shouldn't be too big of a deal. If you are running energy problems though, and I'll cover this in the party comp section, uh, but you can run like Fischl, who's a constant electro battery, generating particles for you the whole time. Also, something to keep in mind with the Razor's Burst is that you don't really gain any particles when you're in it. You can gain some particles from your off-field supports and from other sources, but your Razor himself, when he uses his skill, he won't generate particles for you. As you see here, no particles were made which can make it kind of annoying to get particles on them. Also, because of that, I recommend pressing E and then immediately pressing Q. So then you'll start with some particles, right? You can see that like my, my alt meter is already filled a bit because of the particles uh, from the initial E. Lastly, I want to talk about your talent priority because I know a lot of people ask about this. Um, since Razor is a main DPS, your normal attacks should obviously be your first priority. So I would, for talent-wise, I would maximize your normal attacks above everything else, and then your elemental burst, and then your elemental skill uh, at the end. Regarding Razor's animation cancelling and optimal combos, it's um, for his animation cancels, it's basically the same as any other Claymore. As you guys can see, after 4 hits, there's quite a long delay. So what you can do is you can dash cancel, jump cancel, or literally do anything, right? So I can dash, I can also use an ability if I want to, or swap characters, anything like that, to basically not be stuck in that lag uh, from the last hit. Something else to note is that you can sort of Dragon Strike or Wolven Strike, whatever you want to call it, where it's basically plunge spamming with a Claymore. I personally don't do it very much, but it can be optimal damage. So I will link a guide in the description um, of how to do it if you want to. 
Lastly, something to know is that Razor's optimal combo um, for his normal attack strings are usually three or four, depending. So if you're not in your burst, doing three attacks is what's recommended as the optimal combo. You do normal attack, normal attack, normal attack, and then reset the combo. Because the fourth takes quite a while, although I usually just do it because I want to, but generally speaking, three normal attacks is what you should do, unless you're in your burst. When you are in your burst, Lightning Fang, uh, since you gain attack speed, you can do all four, and it's usually optimal as long as you animation cancel the last hit. Also for animation cancelling, your E does have that same sort of long downtime as your uh, normal attack, so you can also cancel that. Obviously, I feel like everything in this game that has a really long like animation you can cancel, so when you press E, you can dash cancel it. Um, same with your normal attacks. Now let's talk about Razor's builds, and we're going to start with his artifact sets. First of all, I want to say and clarify that the new Pale Flame set is really good, and usually his best in slot. What it does is gives you 25% physical damage bonus with the two piece, and then the four piece will double that effect and give you attack percent. Basically, you gain 9% attack uh, every time your elemental skill hits an opponent. It stacks up to twice, so you get uh, two stacks of this, so 18. And then once you hit the two stacks, you also get another 25% physical damage bonus, giving you a total of 18% attack and 50% physical damage bonus. Also, I want to mention that it is very easy to stack the four piece because you can press E, burst, reset your E cooldown, and then E again. And just generally speaking, Razor's E, if you tap it, has a very low cooldown. And I want to specify that while Pale Flame is the best set, substats really do matter. Because the difference between running like two Pale Flame with two Bloodstained versus a four Pale Flame is only that 18% attack, right? So 18% attack is good and definitely better than not having it but it is still worse than substats, so go with whatever has best substats. But overall, Pale Flame, 4-piece is the best, but if not, there are good options, which I'm going to quickly mention. 4-piece Gladiator for the um, the good set effect, right? 35% normal attack damage and 18% attack is pretty good. And 4-piece Thunder Soother uh, was my personal favorite set before Pale Flame because of the mixed damage. 35% damage increase against enemies affected by Electro is quite good. You can also mix and match some sets like the two-piece Pale Flame uh, with two-piece Bloodstained, which is what I run right now. I only have two good Pale Flame pieces, so if I were to run to force myself to run a four-piece Pale Flame, while I would get that bonus attack percent, I would lose out on good substats. Like, like if we look at my Bloodstained piece, this is really these are really good substats, and swapping this out for a bad or a worse Pale Flame piece would just be a downgrade despite gaining some attack percent from the set effect. I also want to mention the Retracing Bolai set for Razor because it can be a good alternative once again depending on substats and with the Unforged Claymore which is a really good weapon for Razor if you have it, having that shield strength um, and and giving gaining that damage when you're protected by a shield also with your weapon right and lastly just in case you're watching this video very early game and you don't have like five star artifacts or anything the berserker set is a good four star set that i would recommend early on with razor but as soon as you can upgrade it to five star artifacts i would go the ones that i mentioned now let's get into the specific stats you want on your artifacts what substats you should look for and what you want on every single piece for the most part this is straightforward but for the goblet it can get complicated so i'll leave that to the end first of all i want to say that you want crit as with most DPS, on your Razor. Crit rate and crit damage are the most important stats you should be looking for on everything. And of course, attack percent is a great uh, stat you can get as well on your pieces. Speaking of which, attack percent sans is definitely the way to go, and for your circlet, crit rate or crit damage are both good. I would just say go for a one to two ratio, uh, so two crit damage for every one crit rate, and so you can pick whichever circlet helps you balance your ratio. Regarding Razor's Goblet, generally speaking, physical damage bonus is the best overall. So just to clarify before I get into the exceptions, I usually just recommend you go with physical damage bonus, um, unless you are running a Serpent Spine. If you're running a Serpent Spine, it usually depends on your substats because physical damage and attack percent are actually very similar because of how much damage Serpent Spine actually gives you. There are many factors to take into consideration, however, uh, notably your Constellation and your talent levels. If you are Constellation 4 onwards, that's when attack percent Goblet really becomes better than physical for a Serpent Spine Razor. And I know it's only one weapon, but it is one of his best, which is why I want to specify. And on top of that, the higher talent levels you are, the more mixed damage you deal, right? you're going to be doing more and more electro damage the higher your um, other talent levels are like other than your normal attack so attack goblet gets better however if you are running razor with bennett because of how much attack he gives you then physical damage uh, becomes better so it can really depend on a lot of factors so just tldr usually physical damage bonus is the way to go but if you are running serpent spine attack goblet can be better uh, especially c4 onwards and i would just recommend you go with whatever has better substats now we're going to talk about Razor's weapons, and there's a lot of confusion around this, and honestly a lot of misinformation, especially regarding which weapons are the best, how good Skyward Pride is, Serpent Spine, uh, pr like Snow Tomb, Star Silver. I see a lot of people getting the sort of weapon ranking wrong, so I want to clarify this 
with explanation for everything I say so that everyone is covered with this one guide. First of all, we're going to start with the free to play options and the four stars that are available to you as a free to play are the prototype archaic and the snow tomb star silver. So I'm going to go over which ones are better. Uh, there's also the white blind, but this one is never worth it. So generally speaking, archaic is actually better than the snow tomb star silver uh, for a few reasons. I'm going to put up the explanation on screen now. And I want to first of all, clarify that snow tomb is not bad. It's just not worth crafting because usually it's worse than Aminus. If you already have one like level 90, it's fine. You can use it but Archaic is better, especially because Archaic is more consistent and Snowtomb can sometimes out DPS it, but it does require a very like big setup. And more importantly, the effect, like the Icicle can actually miss. It needs a Cryo setup and just a lot of setup in general, and it is very inconsistent. So while there are niche situations where Snowtomb Star Silver can out DPS Archaic if everything lines up perfectly, overall, generally speaking, Archaic is better and what I would recommend as a free to play option. Now that that's out of the way, let's start by talking about the Blacklift Slasher and move on to Razor's best weapons. Blacklift Slasher is better than Prototype Aminus, generally speaking, because it gives you crit damage, and if you can proc the effect, it's very good. Now, the effect of Blacklift varies based on the Abyss. Like, for Last Abyss, it was basically impossible to proc it, whereas for this Abyss, it's actually pretty easy to stack this uh, Blacklift effect, so this Claymore becomes very good and better than the Prototype. However, it does cost Star Glitter, so if you um, are like free to play and don't have a lot of it, it might not be worth spending for a sort of small upgrade. That being said, Razor's best 4 star and one of his best weapons overall, like bar none, is the Serpent Spine. This weapon is amazing. Uh, when it first got released, people hated on this weapon because of the effect, but the effect is actually really good, especially if you run it with a shield, so let me explain. First of all, the stat distribution is great, the base attack is okay, and if you run Razor like a Bennett or a Noblesse support, you get more attack, so a bit low base attack doesn't matter too much, but it does give you 6% crit rate as well at level 1, and this scales immensely, you get a ton of crit rate from this weapon, helping you balance your ratio and making you deal more damage effectively. And on top of that, the effect is arguably the best out of any battle pass weapon, or at least it's up there because you gain 6% more damage at refinement one every four seconds you're on the field. You do end up taking more damage, right? 3% every four seconds, and this stacks up to five times. The fact that you take more damage doesn't matter too much, especially if you're running Razor with a shield like Diona or Zhongli. And since it does stack five times, this is effectively 30% more damage, which is huge, and it gets much, much better with refinement. So this is one of the weapons uh, of the battle pass that is definitely worth refining if you already have uh, good weapons for all your characters. Lastly, I do want to mention that um, you taking more damage actually makes your shield break faster. Um, however, I do recommend running a shield with Serpent Spine because the shield basically prevents you from losing stacks and from taking this more damage. And this weapon is so good for Razor that it actually out DPSs something like a Skyward Pride, which we'll talk about in a bit, uh, and is not only your best four star, but it can also compete with five stars. And we're going to talk about that right now. For the five stars, uh, I only have Wolf's Gravestone, so I'll put a picture on screen of the others. But basically, Wolf's Gravestone and the Unforged, if you can maintain the shield, are Razor's two best weapons, Serpent Spine being a close third. But Wolf's Gravestone is broken because it buffs all your party members, uh, especially when you can proc the effect. It's effectively a stat stick, right? High base attack, a bunch of attack percent, and 20% uh, attack from the effect for Razor himself. And then on top of that, uh, you gain 40% attack when you proc the effect for all party members, which is great, especially with off-field supports that Razor usually runs like Fischl or Xing Chu. And on the other hand, for the Unforged Claymore, it's just a stat stick. If you're shielded, it gives you a bunch of stats and is very good. Lastly, for the Skyward Pride, this has to be the most overrated weapon for Razor, but I want to clarify in a sort of disclaimer that the Skyward Pride actually isn't bad. It's good, and it's better than a lot of the four stars. However, it isn't better than like a Serpent Spine, and it isn't better than a Wolf's Gravestone. It's not Razor's best weapon, and I hear a lot of people saying that it is, and that it's super good, but I've seen so many arguments about it, so much math done just for this weapon, just to settle the debate, and the conclusion is that Skyward Pride is good, but not as good as like Wolf's Gravestone, or even as Serpent Spine, DPS-wise. And I would rank it exactly as his fourth best weapon, right under Serpent Spine. Lastly, I want to mention that the Lithic Blade can be good, if you have Liwei characters in your party, like Xing Chu, I would say at least two. And while Razor is from Mondstadt, it's still a great weapon and usually better than the free to play options because it gives you uh, attack percent and has a good effect, giving you crit rate and attack, and it gets much better with refinement. For the other claymores I didn't mention, uh, they're all like energy recharge or just not that good overall. And the Rain Slasher is a weapon that kind of seems good on Razor, but isn't. It has a low base attack and the Elemental Mastery stat is wasted. So it is just worse than the free to play options, worse than all the other uh, claymores that I mentioned. For Razor's Constellations, they're actually really good. Again, I want to reiterate that you don't need Constellations for Razor. Um, they're not like the biggest increase in damage. So even at C0, he's still good, especially in the current Abyss. 
However, if you do have them or uh, if you are debating pulling for them, I'm going to go over them because they are quite good. First of all, his C1 gives you damage increase. Like when you pick up an elemental particle or orb, you gain 10% damage. So just overall more damage. His C2 is niche. Uh, basically, it gives you crit rate against opponents less than 30% HP, which isn't the biggest deal, but it is quite nice. C3 and 5 increase your uh, electro damage by leveling your talents. And his constellation 4 is pretty amazing. Uh, I really like this constellation. It, it decreases the defense of opponents, which is actually pretty huge. 15% defense reduction is quite significant. And it kind of enables like quick swap razor. Uh, and just overall for razor, this is really good. And lastly, for your constellation 6, I'm not going to go super in detail for this one because it isn't really that good. It just gives you a bit more damage, but it's really not that big of a deal. It's 100% of your attack is electro damage every 10 seconds, and it can increase your energy recharge. But overall, it's not the biggest constellation um, and not nearly as good as like his C4. All right, so now we're going to talk about Razor's teams, and this is one of the most important sections of the video because of how important his team comps are like to him, right, to playing him optimally. And I don't want this section to become too disorganized or anything, so I'm going to explain how I'm going to proceed. Basically, Razor needs like two or three main things. Number one, usually you want physical resistance shred by the form of superconduct or Zhongli. Apart from that, he also wants good off-field supports because of how selfish of a carry Razor is. What I mean by that is when he uses his burst, he wants to stay on field for a while, DPSing and not have to swap out of it. So supports that don't need to constantly be swapped into, that can use an ability and it stays out for a while, like Fischl's E or Xing Chu's Rain Swords, are very good when paired with the Razor. So that being said, let's talk specifically about how to build Razor teams, and I'm going to go over many different like individual support characters and their synergies with Razor. The first thing I want to talk about, however, is actually Superconduct. So Razor is a physical DPS, right, which means he obviously wants the Superconduct reaction if you can run it. Superconduct, if you don't know, is Electro and Cryo, and it reduces the enemy's uh, physical resistance. And what that does is it effectively makes your Razor do more damage, which means you should usually pair Razor with a Cryo character in order to proc that Superconduct. You can also um, run Zhongli instead, because Zhongli also shreds physical res, uh, not as much as Superconduct, and they can stack, so you can run Zhongli with a Superconduct, or with a Cryo user or not. But generally speaking, unless the enemies have very high resistances, like a Rune Guard, you can just run Zhongli and it'll replace uh, the Superconduct if you want to. But anyways, usually, uh, as I said, I would run Razor with a Cryo character. So you can either run a burst support like Rosaria, who can actually be quite good with Razor, uh, because of how she, you know, she applies Cryo for quite a long time, especially at C2, and she increases your crit rate. And other Cryo supports like Kea or even Ganyu can work. However, what I like about Cryo is that there are actually two Cryo characters that are both healers and uh cryo in one so for diona for example you get not only super conduct out of her with razor you also get a shield and a healer so it saves it's like a bunch of slots in one saving you team slots and just being an efficient choice for razor so i really like running razor with diona who is a free character right now with the current event and a very good four star overall i also want to mention that you can run chi chi on the middle of the set because chi chi does heal quite a lot uh you do lose out on the shield and the particles that diona gives you but with the new Mila set, I would argue that there's actually a niche for Chi Chi if you do want to run it. Lastly, for the Cryo characters, I wouldn't recommend Chong Yun. Um, unless you're trying to break the Cryo shield of like 11-3. Generally speaking, uh, Chong Yun transforms all your auto attacks into Cryo attacks. And Razor, since he wants to stay physical, he wants to do those white numbers, uh, usually has negative synergy with Chong Yun. Apart from the reaction you're going for though, which is Superconduct, you should have a team built of uh, off-field supports to help your Razor. I really like Fischl and Jing Chu. First of all, Fischl... Um, her elemental skill does a ton of damage and stays out for a very long time and will generate a ton of electro particles that will give uh, your razor his burst back on cooldown and do just a bunch of damage uh, as an off-field support. Xing Chu is similar, he's a great off-field support with a ton of damage uh, from his burst and allowing you to electro charge constantly for some bonus damage. Also in terms of Razor's healers, uh, I mentioned Dao and Chi Chi when talking about Superconduct, but uh, if you are running a crowd character like uh, Rosaria, and I often do, you want another healer, right? Like you want a healer in that team, right? Because it's you don't you're not running like Diona or Chi Chi. Your Cryo character, let's say, is Rosaria. So in a comp like this, you can actually run someone like Bennett, and Bennett is exceptionally good just overall. So even with Razor, just that attack buff you gain is huge. And Jean's also a decent option with four Verdescent Venner. Now you don't need Verdescent with Razor because most of his damage is physical, and obviously Verdescent doesn't help with physical damage. But the more you invest into your Razor, and especially if you're running like an attack gobbler or something, a lot of your damage is mixed, so Verdescent can help, especially with an off-field support like Fischl. If you are swirling electro, you buff her damage as well. Also, concerning those anemo supports, uh, Venti is actually a pretty broken character, but has negative synergy with Razor. Uh, his burst will oftentimes lift enemies too high for Razor to be able to attack them, right? When they're like floating, Razor can't hit them. So Venti can be bad with Razor. However, Venti is still so broken that sometimes it's worth running him with Razor, especially in certain abyss floors when you need to comp enemies. Venti can still be worth running. However, because of the negative synergy, you could use Venti on like maybe your other team uh, if possible. 
I also want to quickly mention Xin Yan. This isn't a character I use much, but I've even contacted like every Razor main I know that uses her, and she's generally just not worth the slot in your team. Now, that doesn't mean you can't run her. If you like her, you can play Xin Yan, and she does have some value in a Razor team, like giving you uh, physical damage, right? However, overall, she doesn't give you as much as another character like a Xing Chu or Official will give you, so I don't recommend her. But again, if you want to play her because you like her, you can. She has positive synergy with Razor, just not enough to justify her slot, in my opinion. Also, I want to mention that Albedo is a pretty great option in any team comp and can fit Razor's team very well because he is an off-field support, especially in a defense build, right? You press E and then swap and never have to think about him again. So I tried covering almost every character uh, that pairs well with Razor in as much detail as I could. But now here's some example comps, mainly using four stars. For example, this team right here works very well. You have Superconduct, an off-field support, Official, and a healer. Another good team with Diona, who is your Superconduct user and a shielder. Official and Shang-Chu has good off-field supports, who are four stars. And lastly, if you're running Zhongli, he can act as um, a shielder, but also as your sort of resistance shred, so you don't need superconduct. And then you can run an off-field support and a healer. And comps like these, uh, I've all tested extensively, and they work quite well. I also quickly want to mention a different Razor playstyle, and I'm recording this the next day, so I'm sorry if my voice changed. But basically, you can run Razor as a quick swap support, C4 onwards, but it's kind of a meme, and it can work, but I personally don't like it too much. If you don't want to play it, though, usually C4 is recommended for the defense shred, and um, you usually run him with Fischl, so that they can basically generate particles for each other, mainly Fischl being the battery. Uh, and for more information, I would check out the Razor Mains Discord. So this video is already getting long. I had to cut out some stuff, but now we're going to get into the DPS showcase. I hope the guide is very informational. Uh, and if there's anything I want to add, it'll be in the pinned comments down below. Be sure to follow me on Twitch if you're new. And also, uh, just to show you guys, my ratio is 76, 157 going into the showcase with a two pale flame to bloodstain because unfortunately, as I mentioned, I don't have a good four piece pale flame. So with that out of the way, we're going to do the DPS showcase mainly in the new Abyss uh, 12 and Abyss 11 and also some uh, random bosses. Hope you enjoy. I'm searching for the lost and found But you don't care, you're unaware Keep moving like the scars aren't even there It's in the air, like a blazing flare
So yeah, overall, Razor's a pretty amazing 4-star carry, um, great physical damage, and a lot of different ways to play him and build him, depending on what you have. I hope in this video I cleared everything up. Uh, I really like Razor, I made him on my Asia account, and this was probably the guy that took me the longest to make, because I wanted to make sure everything was accurate, uh, as I always do, but Razor has a lot of nuance to him, and I wanted to make sure everything, like, every little nuance was correct. But anyways, if there's anything I want to update, it'll be in a pinned comment, so always be sure to check that out. Once again, shout out to the Razor mains for helping me, and obviously, if you guys need help with anything, feel free to ask me in the comments below, or to join my Discord, or like, ask me on stream or something. Anyways, if you're new, be sure to sub or Tubby will be sad. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Also, something to keep in mind with Razor is that you do actually deal more damage if you purchase a fursuit.